Bhagavatam. The agenda for this presentation is what are the big scientific questions of today? And I will give you overview of Bhagavatam and then discuss with you science and Bhagavatam perspective on creation of the universe, future of mankind and other scientific topics. So what are the big questions in science? Number one, how is universe created? Number two, how the physical stuff in our brain creates conscious experience? Consciousness is big topic in science and scientists don't have answers by the way. Bhagavatam and Gita and lot of scriptures have lot of answers about consciousness and what happens after a person dies. What happens to the consciousness? Physical stuff is still there in the brain but th there is no consciousness after death. Those are answered in the scriptures. The next question is how did life begin? Are we alone in the universe? Are there other universes? What is the universe made of? What makes us human being? How do we dream? These are the big scientific questions of today and I will be talking about that. In Bhagavatam, lot of important topics are discussed from science to psychology to philosophy to duty and devotion. In duty, what is the natural duty of human being in the mind? Describe the duties for the human beings. You know, what kind of devotional service is worth practicing? In terms of psychology, it talks about the mental issues, anxieties, how to do the self control what is the best education in terms of philosophy it talks about the biggest question on the happiness you no know, what is unhappiness what is the ultimate truth what are heaven and hell where from religion and irreligion appeared how many ways we can understand the truth all of these are discussed in bhagavatam so if you want to learn it please study the bhagavatam Scientific topics which I am going to cover during the presentations are creation of the universe. Thousands of research papers are published in this topic of creation of universe. What is the Bhagavatam perspective by the way? You know, do we know how the universe is created? What was there just before the universe was created? All of those will be answered during this presentation from the scientific perspective as well as from Bhagavatam, the scripture perspective. What are the origins of the species? Life after death, fetus development, future of mankind. These are the big scientific topics discussed in the Bhagavatam and I'll be covering many of those today. Before I do that, let me briefly mention about myself. I am CEO of Lucintal, which is a management consulting firm based in Dallas, Texas. We have offices around the world. Uh, I'm author of two books and thought leader. My thought leadership articles are published in the Wall Street Journal, Financial Times and a lot of magazines. And the book I have written, uh, one is the Innovation Engine for Growth, which is a business book. Another is the technology book. And uh, I do speak at spiritual and business con conferences. In terms of my education, uh, I was born in a small village in India near Raipur. Then I moved to IIT Kanpur, then Concordia University, then University of Michigan. And I have been providing strategic growth consulting for a lot of Fortune 500 companies as well as multinationals around the world, as you can see from this slide. So briefly about the Bhagavatam, uh, before I talk about the scientific topics, we must know what is Bhagavatam. It's one of the 18 Puranas, Ved Vyas wrote, you know. He wrote Shiva Purana, Vishnu Purana, Padma Purana, Varaha Purana, Matsya Purana, Garura Purana. So Bhagavatam is one of those Purana which has 12 cantos, 335 chapters. So in Bhagavatam, there are 12 cantos, Prabhupada, who is the founder of ISKCON, he wrote 5000 pages in English. Because of Prabhupada's grace, I could read Bhagavatam because it is originally written in Sanskrit. How many of us know Sanskrit by the way? So Prabhupada worked hard, 
diligently wrote this Bhagavatam for all of mankind so that we can read in English. So you can see there are big volumes of Bhagavatam, you know, uh, 12 cantos. So it takes long time, plus it is a complex subject, my friend. So I'm going to give you glimpses so that you get a good understanding about Bhagavatam in short time. There are 18,000 verses. You can see how Canto 1, Canto 2 are divided in terms of percentage of number of verses. Right? And the topics discussed in Bhagavatam are in Canto 1. There are 19 chapters, 808 verses, story of King Parikshit and origin of Bhagavat Purana. Right? In chapter Canto 2, there are 10 chapters. In Canto 3, 33 chapters like this. And you can see a lot of important topics are discussed. Overall, in Bhagavatam, there are five main discussions happen. Canto 1 is the discussion between Sutta Goswami and sages, Sonak Rishis. In Canto 2 onwards, Sutta Muni and King Parikshit had a lot of dialogues, discussions. In Canto 3, Sage Maitreya and Vidura starts discussing. Right? So Canto 3 and Canto 4 on creation of the world, time and other things are discussed. In Canto 10, Lord Krishna and Uddhava discussion happen on spiritual paths of bhakti and many other topics. Lord Kapila and, and Dehuti, Mother Dehuti of Kapila, Dev, you know, is also in Canto 3. This is also another big discussion on how to realize God and what is Sankhya Yoga. So what are the key questions in Canto 2? What's the duty in all circumstances? How and where the mind has to be applied for transcendental consciousness? How to remove dirty things from mind? How does the Lord create this universe and multiple universes? What is the source of Brahmaji knowledge? How did Brahmaji created all entities which we see? 84 lakhs of entities, species are discussed. In Canto 10, question by Uddhava to Krishna, what are happiness and unhappiness? What is best education? Don't you think it's very important and very relevant in the today's world? You know, who is a rich man and who is a poor man? What are heaven and hell? And how do you know who goes to heaven and who goes to hell? That is also described in the Bhagavatam. It's very important topic. What is punya and path? Based on that, we go to heaven and hell. Everything is described in Bhagavatam. That's why I call this one as a the literature of the mankind. And you can learn a lot from it. You know? What's the actual meaning of tolerance, patience? What are the charity, wealth, self-control? How are the reality, truth to be described? How to understand the strength of a person? All of these are asked by the Uddhava and uh, Lord Krishna answers those. Let's talk the big subject science within Bhagavatam. So from science perspective, there are billions of galaxies and solar systems in our universe, right? And universe is expanding. Why? What is the source of that? It's a dark energy. Do we know? Does scientists know what is dark energy? All they know is expanding. There has to be force behind the expansion. They have no clue about what is dark matter and dark energy, which is a significant portion of the universe, right? So if you understand this uh, chart, which is developed by NASA, it tells the history of the universe in 13.8 billion years, right? Today we are at the right side. So if you <coughs> shrink down, right? Uh, this universe go go back to zero time so the universe becomes zero at zero time right that means initially they thought that all of these universes must have condensed to the one point lot of energy right they found at that moment they there was nothing so they went few seconds before universe creation they found nothing so they said universe was created out of nothing, you know, when Big Bang happened. So, and scripture talks about that, that it was created by the personality of Godhead energy. So 
basically there is a fierce debate happening on creation scientists are mostly wrong as per famous scientists a lot of scientists you know Lawrence Krauss and a lot of scientists say that we are mostly wrong for example until 1929 universe was thought always in the existence it was a steady state universe that was wrong in 1929 Edwin Hubble an astronomer discovered that universe is expanding galaxies are receding from Milky Way you know and Bhagavatam talks about it the expansion right in 1931 Big Bang Theory was introduced by Georges Lemaitre, a Belgian cosmologist. And uh, scientists are telling that our universe is about 13.77 billion years old at 68% confidence level. So let's look into the Bhagavatam perspective. Right? In Bhagavatam perspective, source of everything is the God and God created through his personal energy. Now, Lord takes the three Purusha form Karno Dakshaya Vishnu, Garbo Dakshaya Vishnu, and Shiro Dakshaya Vishnu. Right? Karno Dakshaya Vishnu is basically creates all the universes. Bhagavatam suggests multiple Big Bang. And you can see from here uh, the Vishnu is laying, and from the pores of Vishnu's skin, universe is created multiple big bang is happening as shown in this picture right and when vishnu karnadakshi vishnu breathes out which is the expansion the breaths out universe is created when he breathes in universe contracts that's the theory we have in uh, bhagavatam and this is all described in the canto 3 by the way so there is another theory published by uh, scientists Stinghart and Tulak. Now they developed competing theory, Genesis-like theory of Big Bang, and said that our universe generates and degenerates itself in endless cycle of creation. Scientists found observational evidence supporting this. There is no one Big Bang; there are multiple Big Bang. Bhagavatam explains that. So let's answer. One question is universe cyclic. Bhagavatam says that, right? There is a uh, Satya Yuga, Treta Yuga, Dwapar Yuga, Kali Yuga. Then again, Satya Yuga happens. Treta Yuga happens. Dwapar Yuga and Kali Yuga. That's the cycle we go through. That's the Bhagavatam state point. And scientists, as I mentioned, they also talk about it. Now, next question. Are there other universes? Are there parallel universe, multiverse? So let's look into what scientists are telling. Professor Stephen Hawking, in his final research paper in the Journal of High Energy Physics in 2018, suggested that that our universe may not be the one. It could be the many universes. We are one of them, you know. And he suggests that there is multiverse. And he asked astronomers to find the possibility of parallel universe. He says there is a possibility, he's not sure by the way, there is a possibility astronomers need to investigate. And what Bhagavatam says in Canto 3, it's not possibility, it is their parallel universe. So according to the Hartley Hawking theory, below three possibilities. There are universes like our own, perhaps have Earth-like planets, societies, even individuals similar to the ones in the universe. It's true by the Bhagavatam. Other universes would be subtly different, perhaps with Earth-like planets where dinosaurs may be not wiped out. That's the second possibility this theory is talking about. Right? Third possibility according to this theory is and there would be universes completely unlike our own with no earth perhaps no stars and galaxies and different laws of physics bhagavatam says that's true so let's look into the bhagavatam perspective on the multiverse right bhagavatam says there are other universes where life may be thousands and millions of years behind or ahead of us meaning we have a kali yuga currently 
other universe may be having Satu Yuga currently, maybe Tirta Yuga, maybe Ras Lila happening in the Dwapar Yuga in other universes, right? That's the science uh, Bhagavatam says. Bhagavatam says completely unlike our own with different laws of physics, right? Our universe has four dimensions like space and time, three space, length, width, height, depth basically, and one is the time, you know? So for our planet, there is the Brahma with forehead, right? And in Bhagavatam, it describes that there are many Brahmas with many heads that talks about many dimensions of the universes, planets, with different laws of physics, right? So it tells the third theory, the possibility of uh, uh, like what Stephen Hawking is talking about. So next question, are we alone in the universe? The theory, the scientist theory says that yes, we are not alone. Bhagavatam says that, as I mentioned, right now there are other universes, Treta Yuga may be happening, Dwapar Yuga may be happening, Satya Yuga may be happening, some cases dinosaurs are not wiped out. So that's described in the Bhagavatam. In all of this, by the way, in Bhagavatam, think about it, how they know? The, Sukhdev Muni and our sages, Munis, did not use Hubble telescope. NASA scientists did not help him to give him clue, hey, these are the things. This scientist theory are just coming out in 2000, you know, nine, no, just recently, 2018 onwards, right? How did Sukhdev Muni and other sages could figure out 5,000 years back, right? We need to understand that they were basically the personality of a Godhead incarnated there. Sukhde Muni was, is a resident of Golakdham where Lord Krishna resides and Krishna Bhagwan sent Sukhde Muni to earth planet to spread his knowledge. That's the scripture Bhagavatam, my friend, is coming from Sukhde Muni who is the resident of Godhead, uh, uh, Golakdham. So, and whatever is mentioned in the Bhagavatam is all accurate as you can see it's basically there is no discrepancy from scientists what they are telling and what Sukhdev Muni and Bhagavatam is telling about right another thing how is universe created out of nothing right does it follow law of conservation of energy which says energy cannot be created or destroyed it can be just transformed so the new theory is that total energy of uh, universe equal to the amount of positive energy in the form of matter plus the negative energy in the form of gravity it becomes a zero energy universe that's why Lawrence Cross who is the author of the book says that a universe from nothing that's the title of the book right he says that since the universe was created out of nothing there is no God wait a minute if assume universe was created out of something like uh, initially they thought that all the universes in one point do you think you would have agreed that it was created because of god you would have said no it was just because it the big bang happened it exploded and the universe was created so whatever the case atheist would say there is no god right but my question to scientists is that can human being create something out of nothing? Tell me. Tell me. There has to be cause, right? If you want to create something, even this uh, laptop, cell phone, you have to use some material energy, different PCB circuits and other things. Sensors. Right? So we cannot create something out of nothing. We have to use something. Even we have to use our mind to create it. So God mind was there to create this universe understand that this universe is intelligent universe universe scientists are telling mathematically you can formulate everything is everything is mathematics how something can be mathematics if there is no intelligence scientists are covering those mathematics the gravitational constant the Planck's constant maxwell constant all of those well defining the universe, string theory and other things. And how is so intelligent this universe? There has to be an intelligent being creating the universe. 
the cell phone for example can you create out of nothing and you are a logical person scientific person right can you deny that there is a creator of the cell phone which you use you cannot deny you do not know the creator of the universe uh, the cell phone there are many scientists many technologists many engineers was involved in creating this cell phone done by apple or nokia or samsung there are so many different types of cell phones and we cannot discredit that the way cell phone requires a lot of intelligence to be created same thing universe which is intelligent also there has to has to has to some intelligent being created it and bhagavatam says it is god which is the lord krishna and lord krishna himself says that he created this universe in the bhagavata or bhagavad gita by the way and the bhagavatam perspective is when god breathes out universe is created universe expands and god breathes in universe contracts that's the theory of the bhagavatam so summary of uh, science and bhagavatam perspective we have answered lot of big topics in science we uh, we have answered in this one how was universe created from the science perspective it says big bang theory and bhagavatam perspective is the personal energy of god which was the cause of the universe and krishna bhagwan he took three forms of vishnu i mentioned and that's how while breathing out with his personal energy just thinking let there be universe that kind of uh, mind thinking universe was created who created it scientists are telling it was created out of nothing there was nothing before the big bang that is the theory of the science bhagavatam denies that bhagavatam says it was created by god energy because intelligent universe which is mathematically accurately can be defined cannot be created randomly my friend you know randomly nothing happens there has to be cause behind everything i challenge you if you don't believe in god can you create something out of nothing prove me let's go to the what's the perspective that does uh, universe expands and contracts science says yes some of science does not know whether it is going to contract at the end of expansion right right to expanding because of the dark energy they say and i call it god's energy you know it's expanding what will cause inverse to contract scientists don't know but there are some theories some scientists are telling it is going to contract my friend and bhagavatam says it will because when god wants to dissolve this creation it is going to contact everything it will take everything back in his body right again because it's cyclic again it will create it that's the theory of bhagavatam are we alone science says i don't know there are possibilities bhagavatam says no there are plenty of planets as i as i said some dwapar yuga happening you know there are millions of years behind dinosaurs may be there right are there multiple universes yes uh, earth like bhagavatam says yes you know how many dimensions scientists are telling four dimensions as per string theory they say there are 10 dimensions you know uh, possible but in bhagavatam says multiple head of brahma with multiple dimensions are possible right you know as you have seen from the possibility as per the hartley and hawking's theory you know multiple universes parallel universes all of those uh, bhagavatam says it's not possibility it is there right that's the beauty of the, the bhagavatam so let's look into the stages of the fetus development right from science perspective and bhagavatam perspective canto 3 chap you know it talks about chapter 31 talks about it so first month lump of flesh and uh, egg happens by the end of month a head is formed 
scientists are talking the similar thing according to bhagavatam second and third month hands feet other limbs start taking shape scientists are telling the same thing and by the way they found this through ultrasound right they could not think mentally right hey it may be happening our scripture without using ultrasound talking about it by the way fourth and sixth month it talks about the blood flesh fat bone all of those starts happening modern science talks about that blood vessels happy appearing seventh month development of consciousness feeling of thirst hunger starts appearing and uh, modern science think talks about brain because brain they think about the consciousness right so they are noticing that uh, you know the body can control the temperature and regulate the breathing bhagavatam says consciousness comes because of that body can start breathing so much accuracy my friend without god telling it cannot happen god did not use ultrasound your sign human being god did not use please understand your ultrasound equipment created by you god knows he 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 created it he knows all the fact please understand my friend if you don't believe in god these are the true i would say the evidence of why god created it right future of mankind 5000 years back sukhdev muni predicted what will be happening today he said that water food air will be for sale 5000 years back nobody thought the air will be for sale water will be for sale nobody thought 100 years back we are buying today water from costco and different is walmart you know different uh, apna bazaar india bazaar different kind of uh, stores there worldwide right bhagavatam 5000 years back said wife will be dominant and husband don't you feel that don't you think the sukhdev muni prediction is true today all of this air is on sale my friend we have a cng tank lng tank all kinds of tanks to store the hydrogen nitrogen oxygen all kinds of tanks are there these tanks are created by scientists and engineers it was not there 500 years back 1000 years back but sukhdev muni predicted it how could he predict my friend understand that please use some common sense those who deny the existence of god for them i'm telling this one sukhdev muni also say the religion truthfulness tolerance mercy physical strength the memory will be diminishing with every passing day what the buzzword nowadays our attention is part is nanosecond a few seconds we cannot focus more than that right and that's what uh, sukhdev muni said that our memory the physical strength will be slowly slowly decreasing men will no longer take care of their elderly parents is it true now we have a, a senior citizen uh, home because kids are not taking care of the elderly parents in kali yuga there will be hatred for each other even for a small few dollar few coins wealth alone will be the determining the sign of a man's good fortunes proper behavior and fine qualities if you dress like a you know with tie and shirt oh you are a gentleman wait a minute he cannot be gentleman but sudhya muni said that <laughs> you know money will determine your uh, uh, good fortunes and proper behavior people estimate that if you put a suit you are a gentleman otherwise you are a beggar you don't have any uh, uh, like uh, virtues which is wrong by the way men and women will live together only because of superficial attraction the citizens will suffer greatly from cold wind heat rain and snow don't you notice that those are the predictions 5000 years back there will be further tormented by quarrels hunger thirst disease and severe anxiety sukhdev muni said that in future today happening in future there will be more and more mental issues and anxiety 100 years back 500 years back go back kids were not having mental issues and anxiety now if you do the research 15% to 40% people have mental issues anxieties this was not there my friend 
future of mankind again one who is very clever at juggling words will be considered as a learned scholar a person will be judged uh, unholy if he does not have money filling the belly which is a selfish desire will become the goal of a person right so basically you have seen all the predictions are coming true and it will be coming true in future as well right we'll be seeing more and more natural calamity going forward let's summarize conclusions right bhagavatam talks accurately about creation of universe 5000 years back scientific communities are not aware about bhagavatam points of view yet and somehow they don't reference it i see when scientists discussing some talk about bible somehow scientists are not talking about bhagavatam which has accurately talking about all the uh, discoveries scientists are talking about why they are not referring to bhagavatam that means we need to educate about bhagavatam to the scientific community second point about this conclusion is it talks about universe is cyclic it expands and contracts scientists are not sure whether it contraction will happen or not there are parallel universes i have mentioned all of those so in summary other than scientific topics it talks about the psychological philosophical spiritual devotional topics my friend what's the duty of mankind what's the justice all of those important topics with that thank you very much and please subscribe to this uh, my mega insights channel which is going to empower yourself for a meaningful and joyful life i am going to talk to you about scientific topics psychological topics philosophical topics business and lot of things